Hi everyone, my name is Francesca Ferrando. I teach philosophy at NYU Program of Liberal Studies and I'm a philosopher of the posthuman. So in this video, we're going to address the second way posthumanism as a movement can be defined. In my previous video, I explained posthumanism as a post slash humanism, in which we underline the fact that the human cannot be considered one, but is many humans, plural. In this video, I am going to address the second definition of post-humanism, which is post-anthropocentrism. So first thing I would like to define, uh, I would like to clarify what anthropos means. Anthropos is a Greek word. Anthropos. In ancient Greek, Anthropos means human. Obviously, we can see a different etymology here. Humans come from humanus, which is uh, ancient Latin. And the people, the intellectual people in Rome at the time were very fascinated with Greek culture, and they basically um, created the notion of the human based on the notion of anthropos in Greek. So that's why anthropos is definitely very relevant to us. So if we're going back to ancient Greek and um, study the notion of anthropos, we're going to find something very interesting. The notion of anthropos at the time, although it meant human, did not include every human. In fact, in order to be an anthropos, you had to be You had to be, first of all, a human animal. So obviously you could not be a dog or a cat. Mm? So there would be, again, like non-human animals would not be included. On the other side, you could not be a god or a goddess. So in order to be human, you could not be a divine being, god or a goddess, because at, at the time they were a polytheistic society, so they had more gods and goddesses. But the third category that closed the borders of the human is very interesting. In order to be anthropos, you could not be barbarian. In fact, you had to be Greek. And when we think of bar barbarians, according to ancient Greek, we are referring mostly of Persians. Persians at the time had a wonderful uh, civilization that were not recognized by the Greeks because they were in constant war. Mm? And they were considered less than, uh, than Greek, thus less than human. So we're going to find something very interesting for us and for our philosophical discourse here. The notion of anthropos which is the base from where the notion of human comes from, is a notion that it was already exclusive. So it was based on what is not. So in order to be anthropos, in order to be human, you could not be a god or a goddess, you could not be a non-human animal, but you could also not be a barbarian. You had to be Greek, you had to be educated, paideia, Paideia is an important notion here because in the uh, Latin translation of anthropos, which is actually the etymology of human, which is humanus, humana, humanum, they had different declination according to male, female, and neutral. This, which is from Latin, this term, is based on the notion of education, paideia, Greek education, humanitas, connected to virtus. Mm? So we are going to see something very interesting that actually keeps repeating itself in the social construction of the human, that the etymological roots of human going from anthropos are exclusivist. They are not inclusive. They exclude non-human animals, they exclude the divine realm, and they also exclude some humans who are considered not as humans as others. 
obviously we um, can connect this third uh, separation to our previous video in which we have defined again the human as a um, pyramidal uh, notion, a um, hierarchical notion according to which some humans have been considered more human than others. And based on that kind of discrimination, we can think of sexism, of racism, ethnocentrism, uh, and so on, mm? um, homophobia, etc., etc. Now, there, are, uh, there is another type of discrimination that is connected to this kind of separation, the, to, the one between, between human animals and non-human animals. We are talking about speciesism, speciesism, which is this discrimination based on the species, the species you belong. This type of discrimination is in direct connection to the informal way our geological area era is defined. We are actually living in the Anthropocene. Anthropo, connected to Anthropos, human, the new era of the human. The Anthropocene is a specific geological area which can be included in the Holocene and is defined by Kruzen and Stormer in year 2000 with that area that uh, can be uh, traced back to the uh, second half of the 18th century, specifically with the Industrial Revolution. With the Industrial Revolution, until now, we have, uh, a, um, we have seen a direct impact of human action on the biosphere, on the, um, in, on the planet, and on the other human species, uh, the other non-human species. For instance, we are also living in the sixth mass extinction. There are thousands of species every year that get extinct because of human action. So, the human is now redefine in its relationship with the environment as a mutual relationship. We talked about it in the first video, the fact that ecology comes from home, the house, mm, and that Darwin demonstrated that species adapt according to the environment, adaptation, and now we see something also very important, that the human is also having a direct impact on the environment. So, to summarize what does post-anthropocentrism mean, the fact that we need to decentralize the human from the focus of the discourse. We cannot think anymore with the human at the center of everything. We are in the era of the Anthropocene in which our actions are having a direct impact on all the other species, the biosphere, uh, the planet we inhabit. In our next video, we are going to talk about post-dualism. How can we decentralize our location as a species and also as individuals? Um, it is my pleasure uh, to talk about these topics with you. I'm very passionate about this. You can find more information on my website, posthuman, theposthuman.org. Thank you so much for your kind attention.